Now, friends, we come to the 23rd verse of the second chapter of 1 John. Now, he has already told us that he's identified Antichrist for us. Antichrist is the one that denies the Father and the Son. And now he makes it clear in verse 23 here that you can't deny one without denying the other because, you see, the deity of Christ is essential for your salvation and mine. Because if he's not God, then the man that died on the cross 1,900 years ago cannot be your Savior and mine. In fact, he couldn't be his own Savior because none of us as human beings can die for the other. But it was necessary for God to become a man in order that you and I might have redemption. And therefore, he says in verse 23, "...whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that confesseth the Son hath the Father also." So that you can see that when you say that you believe in God and deny the deity of Christ, you really don't believe in God, certainly not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is the one who sent his Son into the world to die for our sins. And he is God. And since he's God, he alone was the one that could make a satisfactory sacrifice to God for our sins. Because had he been anything else, he himself would have been a sinner. Now, whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that confesseth the Son hath the Father also. And we need to emphasize that because of the very fact of the importance of it. Now, let me move down to verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. In other words, the beginning in John goes back to the incarnation of Christ. Now, John said to those, that which you've heard from the beginning, that which you heard concerning his incarnation, and that's in the Gospel of John, that which you heard concerning his life, and that which you heard concerning his death, that which you've heard concerning his resurrection, let that therefore abide in you which you've heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Now, it is essential, therefore, to have a faith, a living faith, that rests in the one who came into this earth 1,900 years ago. As John said, the Word became flesh and dwelt here among us. And the Word was made flesh. How tremendous that is. And no one hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son that's in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him, exegeted Him. He's led Him out where now we can know about God because God has become a man. And that's the only way you and I could know about Him. We know now about God. We can know Him and the important thing, in fact, in this whole section here is uh, communion with the Father and with the Son. The emphasis here is not so much having life in Christ through faith in Him, but it's now having communion and enjoying that fellowship with Him that is so essential. 